Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be showing you how to generate $1,500 every month with this covered call ETF, the yield max ETF, AMSI. Let's get it. So the first thing that we're going to talk about here is what exactly is AMSI? <clears throat> so AMSI is a synthetic covered call ETF based on the... Um, it tracks the underlying share price of Amazon basically is what it does. So Yieldmax does not actually own any of the shares of Amazon, but they trade their option strategy, which is designed to replicate the price action of Amazon. And it reflects in the price action of AMZ. So um, we're going to get into the charts first. As you guys know, this is usually how I do this. So I have drawn some both support and resistance lines on AMZ and Amazon. So what do the charts tell us? Basically, we don't really have a whole lot of information on AMSI. So as you guys can see, when it first released, it created a support zone here, gapped up, and it's kind of been bobbing around this resistance area. So it looks like it could be a little bearish in the immediate short term, but one way to mitigate this risk is if you bought a bunch of AMSI up here, basically what you'd want to do, not financial advice, this is what I would do in this situation, is I would just DCA down continue to buy shares as the price decreases. So that way you improve your cost basis, increase your potential upside profit, and also the amount of shares that you have, which would ultimately yield more income for less money. Now, if we take a look at the price of Amazon, as you guys can see, this thing, like all the other big tech companies, has basically just ripped to the upside from January of this year up until now, until August, September timeframe. We have some pretty clearly defined support and resistance zones here. This um, 80 to about $100 is pretty clear support. And the resistance is 187 to 178 at the very top. And then where we're currently sitting is 144 to about 135. Now, Amazon did actually have a stock split. Um, I don't remember what the exact amount was. I think it might have been a 20 to 1 stock split. I want to say last year or this year. Uh, typically, when a company does a stock split, the idea is that they want to increase the share count so they can raise capital to be able to pay for whatever it is they need to pay for. So they offer shares to the market in exchange for that. They're, they have to reduce. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a stock split. So they reduce the value of the share price by 20 times, and they basically put the however many extra shares on the market they're going to use. Investors buy into those shares at cheaper prices after the stock split. And then the company uses that raised capital for whatever they intend to use it for. So that's the reason why the share price is what it is right now. Amazon actually used to be valued at, I think at the peak, it was roughly about $3,000 a share. You guys can go back and look for yourself to see what I'm talking about. But um, again, Amazon is kind of showing... Um, a potential reversal here. So we had this golden cross. It moved all the way up into this resistance zone here. Now it looks like we may potentially be having a death cross coming in. You guys can see that the volume bar on the MACD is decreasing. These lighter green bars indicate that the upward momentum is slowing on the MACD, but doesn't necessarily indicate a reversal. You have this overbought territory here, and we had a basically a death cross fake out where it went from a death cross back to a golden cross but it is still kind of hovering in that overbought territory and the price is sitting at resistance. So if I was going to buy into shares of AMZ personally, what I would do is I would buy some up here and I would dollar cost average my way down to whatever, basically however far it was going to go down. That's pretty much what I would do. If all I was going to do was buy AMZ, that's what I would do. So that covers the share prices and the TA for both AMZ and Amazon. So now let's get into what Amazon does. So here you got amazon.com. You can basically look at these different, um, these different things that they do, uh, what they sell and stuff on their website. You guys can go to the amazon.com website and see for yourself. They pretty much do literally, they sell literally anything under the sun that you can think of. And Amazon is huge. You know, they're everywhere. They got warehouses everywhere. They, they deliver everywhere, pretty much all over the world. 
Um, it is considered to be one of the magnificent sevens. So it's a very high value, big tech company with over a trillion dollars of market cap and they have reach pretty much everywhere on planet earth. Now, if we take a look at what the Amazon businesses or what Amazon has the, the different business venues that they have invested in, you guys can see on this. Um, I guess this would be a blog here, and I'll leave it this in the description for you guys to look at so you can see for yourself all of what they do. But you basically got, um, so you got some publishing, publishes and translate books, sells and produces audiobooks, site for book recommendations, uh, sells books, art, and collectibles, e-reading. That just covers the book section. Then you got cloud services. You have AWS, sells data storage and computing power. Uh, part of AWS compliant with federal security requirements. So they do work with the government uh, platform on AWS to create 3D virtual reality and augmented reality apps, online storage for files, photos and videos, machine learning, uh, marketplace to hire humans for tasks that computers haven't learned yet. It's kind of scary when you think about that topic. The computers haven't learned yet. What does that mean? They intend to try to replace our jobs or something? So anyways, that's a that's a topic for another video. So uh, you got delivery, sales packages, storage and delivery, uh, Amazon Flex, Uber style contract delivery services, self storage pickup, smart locks for deliveries inside homes, food delivery service, AI powered warehouse robots. Uh, they do streaming and movies, Amazon Prime for anybody that has Netflix. This is basically the Amazon version of Netflix. Uh, makes TV shows and movies such as Manchester by the Sea, a platform to stream or buy music. This would basically, Amazon Music would pretty much be the equivalent, the Amazon version of Spotify. Um, and then you have IMDB, which is um, information about like TV casts and stuff like that. Social media, uh, they develop video games, which I actually did not know that. That's quite interesting. Uh, you got Amazon Pay, so it allows people to pay through Amazon and other sites. Uh, you get Amazon Prime Rewards Visa. This is a Chase credit card version for Amazon, Amazon lovers out there, any of you who are big fans of having packages delivered to your door. And then you have another option for a Synchrony Bank credit card. And, you know, you got uh, things like Alexa, you got the Amazon Fire Stick, the Ring Doorbell, security reasons to protect your house and stuff, um, Fire Tablet, so this would be the Amazon version of the Apple iPad, and you have a whole bunch of other stuff here. So we'll go through a few more measures and then get into the actual numbers. Uh, Amazon's Prime subscription service with fast delivery, uh, they work with Zappos, you got Prime Pantry, I also did not know this existed. They sell food and household basics. Delivers, uh, del delivery of groceries, home cleaning, handyman and other professionals. Uh, market for handcrafted products, online pharmacy that delivers medications. So, I mean, these guys literally do just about anything you can think of. Pretty much almost anything. Not everything, but pretty close. So it's hard not to be bullish on a company like this. Now let's get into the actual um, dividend piece of the video. So we're on the YieldMax website. You guys can see that YieldMax has actually, since they released these initial four here, they have actually released some additional ones, including the most recent one, JPMO, which is based on JP Morgan. I'll do a video for you guys later on that. Um, but what we're looking at here is AMZ. So AMZ has a 26.05% yield. If we take a look at when the fund was released, you can see the fund inception was 7 23 so about six weeks ago. They have a share count of a million. Now with this share count, I'm actually expecting the, the share count about to increase over time as the net asset value of the fund increases. The reason being is because the more investors that the fund has in a particular holding that they trade options on, the more shares they have to provide so that more people can buy into it to receive more income. This is just simply the way it works. It's not share dilution. This is not actually a stock. It's a synthetic covered call ETF. So they don't actually even own any shares of the company. 
So just some food for thought there. Um, now, another important metric I want to go over is the beta of these companies. So basically what a beta of a stock is, is how volatile a stock is in comparison to the overall market. So if I go to the SPX here, which is the S&P 500, you guys can see we don't get a beta. But if I go to the SPY, just need to have trust, you guys can see that there is a one beta. Basically, one means that it's it moves in sync with the market. Okay. So we'll take a look at a few other ones. So you got AMZ, which is the one we're talking about today. Or not AMZ, sorry. Uh, Amazon. So this one has a 1.24 beta, which means it's about 25 percentage points more volatile than the SPX. We'll take a look at a couple others. We'll take a look at um, choose NVDA. As you guys can see, N NVIDIA is extremely volatile. It's almost double the market volatility of the SPX. Uh, we'll take a look at the new one, uh, but the underlying stock, since the yield max ETFs are most likely not going to have a beta, this one's slightly more volatile than the overall markets. And if we uh, actually type in, oh, we'll use Tesla here as an example since it's been around for a while. As you guys can see here, they don't have a beta. Well, the reason being is because they don't actually own the shares. So, and yield max is not, you know, it's not actually a stock. As I said before, it's a covered call ETF. So there's not really going to be a beta because options are different than the stock market. And if we take a look at one more example, we'll take a look at Kony. Or not, sorry, not Kony. Keep getting the two confused. Coinbase. So you guys can see that Coinbase is extremely volatile, just like ridiculously so. Again, it tracks crypto. This thing is almost three times more volatile than the SPX. So um, when comparing the two between Tesla and and or Tesla and Amazon. So Tesla is basically about twice as volatile as the stock market, whereas Amazon is not quite as volatile as Tesla is. So if we assume that options premiums, the amount, the yield amount that's paid out every month is based on volatility, Tesla is probably going to, Tesla is probably going to pay more than AMZ will. But we're going to get into the numbers anyways. So AMZ's most recent payout was $0.47. Cents. As you guys can see here, it has only been out for about six weeks, so it's only had one payment. Now, the first thing that I want to get into, as you guys know, we're going to try to figure out how much money it would take to get to $1,500 a month initially. So we'll start out with 1,500 shares, you get 47 cents. So 700, so we'll move this up. We'll say you need about 3,100 shares times 47 cents. Okay, so we're not quite there. We'll move up to 3,200 shares. So it would take you about 3,200 shares to get $1,500 a month right out of the gate, it, assuming that you have the capital to do this and this is what you wanna do. So we're gonna do 3,200 shares times the current price, which is 2162. So it would take you about 70,000 bucks to um, yield about $1,500 a month off of this particular options ETF. But again, this is for people that have a lot of money. If you know, if you're like a millionaire or you're up there in terms of net worth and you have the capital to expend, this is something you want to do. This is an option that you can choose to yield passive income if it's what you're interested in. Now, for people that you know may not necessarily have the money up front, they want to accumulate that over time. We're going to go over here to the dividend calculator. So, got all the metrics pulled in. So you got AMZ. It's a monthly pair. We do want to reinvest. Um, again, $1,000 divided by the share price is how we came out to 46 shares. There's your share price. You contribute $300 a month. Your typical tax rate, 26.05% annual dividend yield, which we actually got from the 
uh, yield max website, 26.05, you can see it there. Um, we're gonna assume that the dividend is gonna stay flat and there will be a 1% share price appreciation over time. The reason I say that is because, I mean, as you guys can see in one single, not even one year here, uh, basically nine months, Amazon itself has gone up 26%. So, and the yield max fund came out in July, so it actually missed a lot of that upside move before getting released. So we'll go back to the calculator here. We're gonna say that we'll invest for 10 years. And if we scroll down, um, 1,500 a month is about roughly 18,000 a year. So it took you about nine years to get there. So it takes quite a while. But you know, when you compare it nine years to get to $1,500 a month compared to say, you bought just into Pepsi or something like that, it could take you 20, 30, maybe even 40 years to get to that amount. It just depends. Uh, Pepsi does provide dividend raises, but again, the dividend yield is, I think, like around 2.5% or 3%. The dividend yield on this is 26%. So let's get a little more aggressive. We'll say you put in 500 bucks a month. Well, now you would get to that $1,500 a month in roughly about seven years. If we run the numbers here, we'll just say 17,300 divided by 12 you'd be just shy of that $1,500 a month after seven years. Now, let's get even more ridiculous with this. Let's say you put in 1000 bucks a month. And if we scroll down, as you guys can see here, it takes even less time. It only took you about five years to get to 18000 a year or 1500 a month. And your capital amount went up by about twenty grand, assuming that everything stays the same. If we go even further, we'll say you put in $1,500 a month. So now it's looking a little bit different. You get to 18,000 by about four years and your capital appreciation has gone up about, I think, uh, 18,000. Now, just so you guys know, if you kept on doing this over and over and over again, eventually your dividend payout every month would be absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we don't do that personally. We like to stay diversified, but it just goes to show you the power of compounding and how incredible that snowball can grow over time. So we're going to do one more example here. We'll say that you put in 2000 bucks a month. We'll just say maybe it's a combination of your dividends and or your job income. Okay. So at this point, you would have made it in roughly about three and a half years. And again, you would be about break even at year three in terms of capital, but you would be plus in capital on year four. Now let's be even more ridiculous about this. Let's say you put $1,000 a month income from your active income and you put in the full $2,000 a month with your dividends. And of course you have to pay taxes on these, but you know, for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna go with these numbers. So 3,000 a month in total. As you guys can see, it took less than three years, even at a dividend yield that's roughly about half that of Tesla. If we go back here, you guys can see that Tesla is a little bit, well, roughly about 50% of what AMSI would be. So on 3,000 a month, it would you would basically be at, I think like around $1,900 a month here after three years. So we'll do the numbers again, 21,100 divided by 12. Okay, so you'd be at 1750 a month, but I mean, that's that's not bad. Who doesn't want an extra $1,700 a month, right? So anyways, this is how to get to $1,500 a month on AMZ. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all later. Peace.